All right, so let's go over the, uh, I'm going to record this real quick for you guys. This is the left is a weekly chart on the S&P. The, to the right is the daily. I just went over this a little bit with you guys a second ago, but we'll record this to make sure we're on the same page. So right now, September 7th, we are in a bear market. The weekly, it touched the 50. Touched the 50, broke down below the 20, closed below it. So like I was saying earlier, the next target, 3,500 is the 200. And the 550 is 3,300. This is where the market is going to look to gravitate towards. This is like a magnet. We're at 3,897. So we got some still some room on the downside in the S&P. They're selling rallies. Every, every chance they get, every rally we get, they're selling it off. The daily confirms it on the S&P. We broke out here when we called it earlier in July. June and July said, hey, we should rally up to the 200. That could be a potential top, 43. 50, 25, 50, it was the top on the daily charts. Said the target was a 20 on a retracement. It broke the 20. Then we talked about a retracement up to the 20 for a retest, which it did. Then we said this had a lot of downside, 4,200 down to the 50, almost a 200-point slide. That was correct. It came down to 50. It did not bounce on the 50, though. We went right through it, and guess what we did? We just retested last week. We talked about in the room that a major top should be 4020. It actually high was 4022. And we're still rolling down to the downside. So if you notice, the weekly major downside still on the weekly going into a historically weak September, October month. And then look at the daily, there's no support. We're below my 200, 550, my 20. Like 50, I mean, there's just, it opens the downside all the way down. First stop will be 3650 and then 3500. It is just an ugly looking market. Here's the first demand line that we have. Would be right there at this level. There's your first demand. So it's 3,900 now. It looks like we slide to 3,650. It's a 250 point slide possibly on the S&P. So that being said, let's take a look at the, the, the charts here this morning. We had a sell this morning. Red ATR, this is our full retracement indicator below. We had a full retracement. Full retracement. It's our larger time frame. Had a WPT, and this confirmed an error on our smaller time frame to pop in the trade. As far as that goes, let's look at what's going on this morning or yesterday morning. I'm going to tell you the trades we're going to look for this morning. I'm going to show you a few setups on uh, yesterday's morning action, and we're going to look for the same setups here this morning. So there's two setups. This is a, uh, yesterday. Um, you should start looking at these markets around 745 Eastern. The first setup that we went over our conf two conference calls, this is what's called a full retracement setup. Full retracement setup. That's when you have a red ATR, total red ATR. You have your oscillator below, above 80, above the red line. And you got a WPT, a WPT indicating a reversal fires off then you look for the first red reversal bar on this time frame or you can look at the smaller time frame which confirmed which I'll show you so that's a full retracement setup yesterday's trading was phenomenal just absolutely phenomenal the charts were actually excellent on calling these reversals so that's our full retracement setup into the zone that's a zone retracement full retracement zone setup the zone is here the zone is between the red lines which are my which is my ATR the second setup which we have is called a momentum setup this is where 
is you you I have these two moving averages on here for you guys set up. And if a smaller moving average and a larger moving average, it crosses down. The ATR has got to be read first if you're shorting. We get the moving averages that are crossed down, but they never touch on the way back up. But the key is this oscillator never gets above 80. 80. You see how it stayed below 80? 80 is right here. Look how it stayed below 80 when you got a red reversal bar. This is called a MOMO setup. And a momentum setup is where you stay below 80. You don't go above 80 like a full retracement in the zone. Because we got into the zone, it never gave us an opposite green ATR dot, so the short's still valid. So that's a full retracement zone setup. Then it goes right into a momentum setup because we start rolling over. I went over this in my conference call. If you do not understand this setup, go to daytradingthefutures.com. Click our Series 1 and Series 2 trading video, how to trade these two setups. If you just focus on these two setups, you're going to see tons of trades in all futures, stocks, Forex, currency, and crypto markets. This works on the crypto markets also. All right. This is a momentum setup. Crossover. There's the green reversal bar showing the counter trend traders are coming in. Look at my WPT bars who called the high. The keys of WPT with the system. There's my boxes that call the reversal. Box called the reversal on the full retracement setup. And then the box called this on the MOMO setup. This is momentum setup. We'll call it the MOMO. And that called the high in the S&P yesterday also. All right. So that is a full retracement into a momentum setup. Now, this is a larger time frame. This is my Uni Rico bar 12020 that I show in the room. This is my setting I like to use. I like to use a 12020, the Ninja Trader Uni Rico bar. But let's say you want to trade a smaller Uni for smaller stops. If you get into my zone, we have an automated error that fires on a smaller time frame. So let's go back to. 8 o'clock yesterday on my smaller time frame over here. And it should fire an error right into the zone to confirm it once we get up into that zone. So if you get up into that zone, go to 931 on the next one. Let me show you. It'll confirm. So we move along. There's 931. So watch what happens, how you can use a smaller time frame with a larger time frame. As we move along yesterday, we had this trade first. We had the full retracement trade into the zone. That's a short. There's my full retracement into a momentum setup. Momentum caught that big surge down. That's a huge surge. That's 45 and three quarters down to 32. Big S&P point move. Then we come back up into a full retracement into my sell zone again. This is a full retracement. Now what you can do, you can use a smaller time frame if you want for smaller stops. This would be a 15 tick stop on the S&P. And you can use the S&P micros, which is one tenth of the full contract too if you want. But you notice my automated arrow fired right at the high. I got a WPT on my larger time frame if you want to trade off that. But if you want to wait till it gets in the zone on a full retracement large time frame, you can check down to the smaller time frame. You got the WPTs firing here, catching the rolling position counter trend traders. That's these green boxes that form. My arrow automatically fired right at the high for entry. This automatically does it for you. And your stop is above there. Now you, you can trade on the strategy that automatically trades for you. We have that available to you. Well, if you see you're coming into full retracement, if you want to turn on the strategy, it'll out automatically take this trade with your entries and your stops and your targets automatically for you if you want to do that. And you can turn it back off after your first and second retracement. Then what happened was we got confirmation here at 935 because it went from a full retracement into another momentum retracement. Momentum retracement, red ATR. There are my moving averages that are crossed down. When it rallied back up, they never touched or kissed. 
Let's check and look at my oscillator. My oscillator is below 80, showing weakness in the S&P, and we had a huge sell-off in the S&P again yesterday. Look at how gorgeous this is again. Did my arrow confirm on my smaller time frame? Yes, we got a WPT on the smaller time frame. That's why I have them beside each other in the room. My long time frame sets it up. My short time frame, my oscillator confirms the entry, and it was a massive move to the downside again. Look at that massive move. So even on the first one, we're looking at the lowest bar for a live entry would be 39.40 and three quarters to 39.40 and a half, and it got all the way down to 24 again. That's 15 S&P point moves with a 15 tick small stop, either with a large contract or with the micros if you want to trade the micros. And my smaller time frame, it confirmed the larger time frame move because here is the Momo. There's Momo. And there's a full retracement. All right. So it's the same setup daily over and over again. We're going to look for these setups this morning. I'm going to look to break low value area this morning. Every single rally they've been selling off because we're in a bear market on the daily chart. We're in a bear. <clears throat> September and October, historically weak in the S&P. The interest rate scare, the bumping up rates. It's really scaring the market, shaking the market apart, and that's creating great opportunity for us trading this volatility. So what we got to do is we got to make sure that we trade what we see, not what we think. And look how that works. There's back to back, the same exact setup. Here's a full retracement into my zone with the WPT. My box confirmed. Like I said, I go over two series of conference calls. I already went over. Go to daytradingthefutures.com, play series one, series two. I specifically go over these two uh, um, trade setups. And this works on, like I said, this works on all futures, stocks, Forex, currency, and the crypto market. Okay? All those markets. You should see the same exact setup. Okay, so we're gonna look, but I like this momentum setup because see this oscillator doesn't get above my 80, but my ATR, the ATR is a key because the ATR is down, it's in a downtrend. So you want to come back into this zone and you don't want to see an opposite color ATR. You don't want to see a green ATR form or you can't sell this top. Just like the momentum, if this moving average crosses over before you get a red reversal bar, you can't sell that momentum. And you don't want this oscillator to get above 80 or it's not a momentum play. So that's yesterday's price action. Okay. Then we move up again. We go into another momentum play. Another beautiful trade. Yesterday was just absolutely on fire. Our setups were just killing the market yesterday. There's a Momo. Called the swing high again. Oscillator doesn't get above 80. There it is. You get an optic color red reversal bar. You want it 945. We'll see if 945 got an arrow that fired over here. 945 on my smaller time frame. Check this out. When it went up here, look at my small time frame. Arrow fired right at the high for a small stop. Automatically fired. You want to do your automated strategy. There it is. Another big possible move. 39.26 down to 07. That's over just around a 20 point, 19, 20 point S&P point move. Guys, this is not a one to two point S&P point strategy. Okay. That's for amateur traders who want to trade for a point, three quarters of a point, two points on the S&P. These are big swings in the S&P with small stops. So you just got to wait for your points of inflection points, meaning Mo Momo for retracement, the oscillator, the, um, and the, it will do the work for you. Then we come back up, we come into a full retracement again. We actually get an arrow that fired on the larger time frame, which actually just is an excellent full retracement. 
Now we're in a full retracement. So if you take a look at the at yesterday, and we're going to go over today, we want to look for the same things today. We want to look for this full retracement and the momentum setup to fire us in these setups. So let's go back, and now it's at 10 o'clock, just in an hour and a half trading, just absolutely calling the turns yesterday morning. Every single turn was called by either the momentum or the full retracement. Let's take a look. So there's a full retracement up into the zone. We don't get a green ATR before the red reversal bar. That's a sell. Momo, MAs crossed down, never crossed below 80. Red reversal, caught the sell. Came up to the full retracement again. Above 80, into the zone. My smaller time frame, 113.13, called it. Came down. Our moving average never crossed up. Below 80, red reversal, Momo called it. Oscillator never crossed above 80. MAs never crossed over. Red reversal called it. Full retracement back up into the zone. Arrow actually fired here. Full retracement caught it. So look, full retracement into a Momo. Full retracement into a Momo. Momo. You get two back-to-back -back Momos. That means the market's really weak. Heads up. The second Momo should be a drastic move to the downside. And then we get another full retracement uh, into that uh, setup. And then we go right into um, a possible MOMO into full. So that's what we'll look for today. Right now, we're going into another full retracement. This morning, we had one set up right now, full retracement. Right there. Now we're coming back into a full retracement again. I want to see a WPT. We'll be good to go as far as that goes also.